Now let's get back to the page where we, well, to admin page, right? I think we can do more with it. So user six pass login. Mm, admin array, we see that we redirected here. When it happens, it sends check admin request. Well, if, if we look at the page, first of all, let's look at the page. Where, where is it? Admin.html. Oh, it's redirect because it's not modified. Uh, uh. No, I see the page. It's cached in my browser, right? Let's let's uh, send it in the repeater and and get and cached version. We need to remove to remove when we cached it. If here. These are caching headers. Okay, now we have it. Mm, so if we look how this check happens, it sends request to check admin page. Well, API endpoint. And if it is its success, it uses, uh, it gets URL from the response, from success response of this endpoint that it uses the set URL to do some stuff. Mm. <coughs> And this URL can be quite interesting to us, but we don't know what is it is. So my assumption is the response of check admin contains something very interesting. So let's let's have a look at it. Um, so we have requests sent somewhere here. By the way, if you struggle to find something, you can press here filter and disable some stuff like I don't want to have scripts shown or XML shown, something like this. But I never bother actually because we don't have that many requests. So here is check admin, send it to repeater, send, we get error, user is not privileged. And the question is how it knows which user it is. Apparently we don't send username and if we could, we would send, we, we would try to modify it. So here we don't have parameters here. We don't have parameters here and we have this authorization header. Let's try modifying it a bit. Now we see it says JSON web token error invalid signature. So we know that this thing that is used to authenticate the user apparently. And this is J JSON web token, JVT. And another way to detect JVT is pretty simple. There is familiar structure to it. So H -G -G JVT consists of three parts. And, and all three parts are separated by dots. And they are all is base64 encoded message. So let's try decoding it. We can select it send it to decoder and here in decoder tab you can say decode as and there is no jvt support out of the box you can store an extension for that but it's pretty messy but we can just decode base 64 and see what's inside you can say that this is a text and here we go so this is the first part and this is header it says algorithm to use and that this is jvt then this is arbitrary payload. <coughs> and the third part here is the signature. And the first thing we can try to do is we can, well, we can take the first part of it. Let's just take the first part, the header, send to decoder. We decode it as base 64, then we can modify it. So algorithm says which algorithm for encrypting JVT, encrypting, decrypting and validating JVT is used. And one of the algorithms the JVT supports is no algorithm, no, no security. So we can just type non, encode it back to base 64, take it without the equal sign. 
put it there and see if it works. We can try this way. It says invalid signature. So uh, the standard says that if encryption algorithm is known, the signature should be empty, but the dot is required here. Let's try this. Now it doesn't work. So the library that backend uses here for check JVT, it checks, it requires signature if an encryption key is passed. So we, if even we, if we say that an algorithm is none, since backend passes a, a key, some secret key to decode it, it says no, you try to pass encryption key and algorithm is known and will not work. So there is no easy way around, but try to decode it. <coughs> so I don't know a good way to do it from Barb's suit. So let's do some Python, shall we? So first of all, let's let's put encoded secret into a string. And we can do impergvt. And then, yeah, I experimented a bit with it. And we have after complete for that. So we can iterate through secrets, through, through different words that we assume can be secret. And we will use again, as we used in brute force of credentials, login credentials, we can use 10 game most common passwords. And here we can do like try <coughs> JVT. We try to decode JVT encoded message. And don't forget to remove white spaces from the end of the secret because these lines, they, they when you iterate through files, they contain trailing new lines. And it requires also to specify algorithm to use. In our case, it's HS256. We can see it in if we send it in decoder again. If we decode it, we see that algorithm here, HS256. Um, and in accept, we will be catching if token is invalid. We just ignore it, and if it is valid, we print the secret we found, and we break the iteration loop. And here we have it. In no time, we have the, the password, and let's check it, actually. So we can use JVT, decode, we pass the password we found, and now we have it. The next step is to go and modify this input as, as we see fit. So we can experiment. Apparently there, there is permissions field. So we can put the previous output into message. And in message there is permissions. And we could experiment with different types of permissions. And when I experimented, I found that user admin is the right thing. So they all user read, user write, and user admin just grants us access to well, admin panel, basically everything. So let's do this. But yeah, in, on practice, it might be a trial and error, you know. We encode a message, and this is our new JVT payload. We can go back to repeater, put it into authorization header. And now we have it. We have admin URL. Let's actually have a look what, what it has. Maybe we can exploit it in the next video. Oh, hey, we have a list of users. And they are encrypted passwords. Maybe we can try decoding it in the next video. But for now, that's it.